Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert OET teachers here at e2language.com. What we're going to do in this live class is look at the new reading part A subtest for the OET, okay? So this is OET reading part A. So this particular subtest is taken separately to B and C. So you get 15 minutes for reading part A, then they will collect the uh, question booklets from you, then you will do reading part B and C together in 45 minutes. Because it's only 15 minutes long, we're going to need a method I and mean, you certainly need to understand what you're looking at on test day. You don't want to be reading the instructions on test day while that 15 minutes is ticking down. We need to understand exactly what we're looking at so we can just go bang, bang, bang right from the start. Okay, so reading part A, 15 minutes. You get four short texts. There are 20 questions based on those four short texts. There are three question types. There are matching questions short answer questions and sentence completion questions. We're going to look at each of them in this live class, so do stick around. Firstly, let's look at those four short texts. So, the first thing I want you to do on test day is to look at the title given at the top of the texts. Fractures, dislocations and sprains, for example. Each of the texts will relate to this single theme. So this is text A, and you can see that it's giving definitions of each, right? Text B, it's a longer text, and it's looking at simple fracture of limbs. It looks like some sort of management of how you look after a fractured limb, okay? But you can see here there are subheadings, dot points, etc. Text C, drug therapy protocol, and this will also be related to fractures, dislocations, and sprains. But this is a distinctly different text. It's a table, and it's looking at the uh, medication that you would deliver to somebody, okay? Now, just for your interest, there will always be one text that is sort of graphical or visual, like a graph or a table or a chart or something like that, okay? So three will be text-based, one will be visual. And text D, well, these are, this is the technique for a plaster back, back slap for arm fractures, and it's numbered. Okay, so there's some texts. Let's have a look at the first type of question that you'll get. These are the matching questions. They're pretty straightforward, okay? So this is what the questions will look like. It's, so this is for questions one to seven. And it says for each question, one to seven, decide which text a, B, C, or D, the information comes from, you may use any letter more than once. More specifically, it asks you, in which text can you find information about procedures for delivering pain relief? So what you need to do is think, okay, in which of those texts, A, B, C, or D, will I find information about pain relief? Now, you might just know it. You probably already know it from what we just looked at. But otherwise, you will definitely have to go back and look at those four texts, and you're just going to write A, B, C, or D into that gap. So you're going to ask yourself, okay, would I find information about pain relief in text A? Probably not. Would I find information about pain relief in text B? Mm, possibly. Would I find information about pain relief or procedures for delivering pain relief in text C? This looks very likely, doesn't it? You can see the big word morphine there, for example, and you can see milligrams and milliliters, for example. Or would it be in text D? Well, probably not. So what you're going to do on test day, as soon as you find out, aha, it's in text C, you just write the letter C there, okay? So you'll just go through and you'll be writing letters through here like this. That's how you answer questions one to seven, the matching questions. Let's look at the short answer questions. So let's look at number eight. Actually, let's go back, let's read the instruction. It says, answer each of the questions with a word, a word, one word, or a short phrase. It might be say two to whatever, it might be two to five words from one of the texts. Each answer may include words, numbers, or both, okay? So what should be used to elevate a patient's fractured leg? 
Let's look at this very closely because there are some hints in the question that can help us. This one particularly, what? What should be used to elevate a patient's fractured leg? So we're going to have to find keywords in here, find the corresponding text, and then we're going to answer this with a noun, okay? I think the answer uh, is pillow, for example, okay? So you can write pillow or a pillow would also be considered correct. Let's look at number nine. What is the maximum dose of morphine? Now we know we're going to look at text C to find the answer here. Per kilo of a patient's weight that can be given using the intramuscular route. What type of answer do you think is going to fit here? Is it going to be a name of something, a number perhaps? Well, we're looking at maximum dose. It's going to be, it's definitely coming from text C, but let's say it's something like three milliliters or something like that, right? Whoopsie, three milliliters. I don't know exactly, you'd have to look at the text, but it's certainly going to be a number because it's asking about dose, right? Cool, last one, number 10. Which parts of a limb may need extra padding. Well, again, you'd probably go back to the same uh, text that was talking about the pillow, something like that perhaps. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Let's look at the sentence completion questions. They're quite similar. Complete each of the sentences with a word, one word, or a short phrase, say two to say five words perhaps, from one of the texts. Each answer may include words, numbers, or both. So falling on an outstretched hand is a typical cause of a what of the elbow. Look at this little word carefully. Ah, we're gonna need a singular noun. The answer is in fact dislocation. Okay, so the trick with these uh, short answer questions and with the sentence completion questions is that the way that the sentence is written here will be written in a different way in the text, but will have the same meaning. For example, it will use synonyms and it will use a different sentence structure. There will be key words like elbow or hand, for example. Then you'll need to read carefully in the text to find the specific word or short phrase to finish this sentence. It requires a bit of practice. Just before you move on or before we move on to do some real practice from an official OET sample test, I want you to click the subscribe button. The reason is every time we release a video onto YouTube, you'll be the first person to know about it. You'll get a notification on your phone. You can watch it, okay? And if you're enjoying this video, please click the thumbs up button and feel free to leave a lovely comment. All right, let's do some practice. Now, the practice test that we're using is an official OET sample and I've been given permission from the OET themselves to use this sample, so I'd like to thank them for that. This will be a real practice. Here we go. So, what I'm going to do first, because you can't look at all of the texts at once, I'm gonna first give you 30 seconds to scan read each text. What I want you to do is to look at the headings, the subheadings, and scan your eyes over to find key words. I'm only going to give you 30 seconds, so you'll need to speed read and scan read, okay? Try to get as much meaning and notice as many keywords as possible. By the way, I actually recommend you do this on test day before you begin. I recommend you spend about probably less than a minute, to be honest. I'm giving you more time than you need. Just scan reading each of those texts because you'll be surprised at how many keywords you pick up. And then when you start to answer the questions, you go, ah, I saw that in text A or ah, I saw that in text C, for example. Okay, keep skin reading, scan reading, speed reading.
Okay, here we go. We're going to do the matching questions now. Now, just before we begin, if you're on your phone watching this, you're going to struggle to see the text because I'm going to have all four texts on the screen. It's going to be tiny. You probably need to watch this on your laptop or computer, okay? So you might have to transition from your phone. Here we go. All right, what you would have found there with those matching ones is that some came to you like that. You just said, okay, bang, that's from text A, or boom, I know that one's from text C. Other ones you would have gone like, whoa. So when you're thinking about time management, remember I gave you 30 seconds per question there, but on test A, you'll get some in five seconds. Remember always to double check. Some will take you 40 seconds, so it'll sort of even out. The first part, the matching part, should be fast though, okay? Much faster than the short answer and the sentence completion, which we're about to do now. So I'm gonna give you 45 seconds per question for each of these.
All right. How did you go for those short answer questions? They are kind of tricky because you're doing two steps there. First of all, you're identifying which text the information is in, A, B, C, or D. Secondly, then you're finding the precise keyword or keywords or phrase, including a number to fill that. Some of them I got immediately, some of them I struggled and probably needed more time. So again, it'll balance out on test day. Here we go, the last set of questions, sentence completion.
How did you go? That was pretty tough. A couple of things I noticed were that acetylcysteine, for example, that key word that was mentioned in about four questions is actually mentioned in two different texts. So this was a real problem because you'd find the key word and you think, oh great, that's a great key word. You go to text B, you couldn't find the answer because it was in fact, it was also mentioned in text C as well. And there's the answer there. So there was that issue. The other thing that I noticed, which is uh, quite important, there was one of them that uh, about jaundice, and I couldn't find the answer to the one about jaundice, right? I just, the 45 seconds finished and I was at a loss. Now later on, about three questions later, uh, as I was scanning, look for, looking for another answer, I saw the answer to jaundice. So then what I would do on test days, I'd go back to that question, then I would answer it and move on. So a key tip here is if you can't find an answer after about 30 or 40 seconds, skip it, move on. Because what will happen is you'll get better to get more of the other ones, perhaps miss it, or what will happen is you'll be doing them and you'll come back and go, ah, there's the answer to that one. Okay, because as you're scanning across these texts and reading more and more, they'll become more and more familiar to you, then you can pick up the ones that you actually missed. Remember, there's no negative marking, so if you don't know, just guess. All right, crunch time. Let's have a look at the answers, guys. Here we go. So, in which text can you find information about blah, 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 blah? Number one, D. Two, C. Three, B, 4, D, 5, A, 6, B, 7, C. The first short answer questions could have been headache or headaches, plural. Both would be accepted as correct. Number nine, hepatitis C or hep C. Remember, if you spell an answer wrong, it will be considered incorrect because you're copying directly from the text there's absolutely no reason you should spell a word like hepatitis wrong or even a really complicated word because you'll copy it directly from the text. Make sure you also get the capital letters and everything correct as well. Hepatitis C or hep C would be considered correct as well. Number 10, ALF or acute liver failure. You could use the uh, abbreviation acronym or the full phrase there. Number 11, renal failure not renal dysfunction. Uh oh, I'm gonna have trouble pronouncing this word. Number 12, methionine, 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 I suspect. Number 13, charcoal or activated charcoal would be considered correct. Number 14, speed of absorption with a P. Number 15, this is the jaundice one, I'm pretty sure, right upper quadrant. Number 16, Several answers are possible. Nausea or vomiting or nausea and vomiting or vomiting and nausea in that order. 17, enzyme inducing with a hyphen. 18, 100 or 100 or 100. 19, 12 or 12 written as a number or as a word. And number 20, last one was supportive or supportive Treatment. Cool bananas. Please put your score into the comments below out of 20. How did you go? And are you happy with your score? Do you think you perhaps require a little bit more practice at this? This really does require practice because there's several things going on. There's a lot of different brain function between scanning, between documents, searching for keywords in the question prompt, identifying corresponding keywords in the text, reading the synonymous language, finding the keyword that fits the gap, making sure that it's fitting grammatically. There's a lot going on there and it does require practice. So if you do need some practice, Check out www.e2language.com. We are an OET premium preparation provider. So you can trust in our uh, quality practice material. And if you do need help with writing, we can certainly help you out with writing. We deliver one-on-one -on -one tutorials with expert OET teachers. They're extremely effective. Uh, also, if you're worried about speaking, take the one-on-one -on -one tutorials for speaking. If you require additional practice materials and more methodology lessons like the one we looked at today, but in much more depth, then do check out e2language.com. We can certainly help you out. We're an international global provider. Doesn't matter which country you're in, you can find a time to book uh, a tutorial with a teacher. And yeah, 
get you through this test and get you into the workforce, into the medical workforce. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful. Good luck on test day.